guitars, which cool. we had a Veritas 503, right? Yeah, this is um, my latest guitar from them and kind of their latest model. Um, clearly very like classic 335 double cut Gretsch kind of feel, yeah. um, but with kind of his own takes on it. Now semi-hollow, um, right? Not hollow the whole Yep, thing. yep. Okay. It's got a center block. Um, awesome. And yeah, it sounds really great. Um, when you order one from him, it does come with knobs. Um, I left my knobs with a, a very nice person in Singapore. Um, and then, I mean, you can have him put this arm on, but I did that myself. So I've, I've changed it up a little bit. Um, this one actually wasn't made for me. It was sitting around the shop and I kind of forced my hand and you should, you you should let me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> More or less, I'm buying it from him, but I more or less stole it. Um, but Casey deserves it. Do you just it. hate knobs? No, um, stole no, they, those weren't stolen. I gave those away. Um, a very kind fan in Singapore um, let me play his Veritas and oh, nice. proceeded to tell me that he liked the knobs on this guitar and wished he could get them in Singapore. And I was like, well, I've got a bag full of them at my house, so why don't you have these? So I, I gave him the knobs off the guitar, um, and I just haven't put any back on it, and I, I don't know, I kind of like it. There's yeah. something, like I don't, you'll see on the Strat, like I don't put knobs on the Strat, because when I play, like it, bump. you always, yeah, bump the volume, yeah. and you're like, why is my guitar not making sound, and you think a pedal's broken, and you're yeah. looking in the wrong place to get it fixed. Um, so yeah, but for this, it just kind of, just so happened that I didn't put anything back on for knobs. Cool. Um, and what kind of pickups are in this? Um, these are Bearcat pickups, so Casey is getting into his own pickup thing. Um, I think he's starting a company soon. I don't know when that'll be, uh, but you can you can call him up and buy pickups from him. Um, these are the Bearcats, they're kind of like a lower output humbucker kind like of, thing. of thing. Similar, but um, still very different. A little more bottom end, a little more top end. They're just like a little punchier. Okay. Um, so. Yeah, they're, he put them in this guitar and was like, check them out, and I super love them. So, awesome. um, yeah, they're they're really really great. Yeah. And, then, and yeah. I noticed you got satin on the the back and the the neck. Is that what you prefer? Or? Well, um, like I said, this was made for another um, customer, um, and I just kind of grabbed it um, when the customer um, didn't, <laughs> if you will. Um, so yeah, the satin thing's cool. Um, the one he's making me is is double bound, so okay. it'll be it'll be painted. But I, I mean, the satin's really cool. It looks nice, and yeah. you can tell where I've like played it. I don't know if like the camera picks it up, but I'm kind of playing the satin finish off of it slowly but surely. Nice, which is cool. But yeah, I mean they're they're amazing guitars. These things are just really fun to play. Like it, it feels really sturdy. They resonate really well, um, and they're just rock and roll machines. So awesome, man. Cool. Well, you got what three other guitars back here? Tell us a little bit yeah, about these. Yeah, grab these. Um, this is not a Veritas. Go figure. Um, this is my latest guitar purchase from a, a really good friend. Um, this was his birth year. David Gilmore. Uh, I wish. <laughs> um, no, even even more near and dear to me than David Gilmore, my good friend Jason Miller. Um, he, uh, he bought this um, years ago, it's his birth year Strat, and um, it was very, yeah, very special to him, and he texted me one day and was like, hey, I'm selling a bunch of music gear, he roasts coffee now, which he's nice. really good at. Um, Theory, collaborative, check him out. Um, but yeah, this guitar was on the list, and I was like, what, you're selling that Strat? Like, that's the piece of gear you would never sell, and he's like, yeah. Are you interested? And I was like, well, yeah, I'm interested. So yeah. it's a 1976 um, nice. David Gilmore Colors. Um, but yeah, it's it's really great. I had um, Jason Schroeder from Schroeder Guitars. I just found out he was in Reading. I've seen his hardware awesome. all over and yeah. um, recently found out that he was in Reading. So I went to meet him and he got this thing set up and playing super awesome. And uh, it's pretty, Pretty stock. The pickups are original. The switch is still a three-way, so you have to like find the little notch for the in-between things and nice. no knobs because I hit them when I'm playing and that's annoying. 
but yeah, everything's. And all the uh, road wear is not, uh, it's just. Not, not relic as far as I know. I think he might have, he might have pulled some of the finish off the back of the neck. Okay. Um, Cause I think that's just something that Jason preferred, but I mean, it, yeah. it is what it is. It feels, feels great. Sounds awesome, and I'm I'm loving this. Like I've been kind of on a nice. strat kick lately, so when this came my way, I was very stoked. They seem to be making a comeback. They're, For a while, we didn't see them in worship music. Now. Yeah, yeah. They're. I mean, James and Jeffrey, I know, are big strat guys, and um, they kind of lead the lead the way with that stuff. So Dylan from jumping on their from Hillsong too. So oh, is he? Is he yeah, playing strats? Yeah, Dylan's a big. In fact, uh, I believe he plays a Gilmore. Oh, cool. So well, yeah, look at us. Twins. We'll have to go out on tour with those guys. Yeah. Again. So, yeah. Awesome. Stratocasters. Fun. Cool. The rest of the stuff is um, very toss. This is um, my guitar, but our other guitar player, Jonathan, is using it. It's just a pretty standard Portlander minus the the body carves. I don't really. I'm like a telly guy. I need a slab, you know. Yeah. Um, but this has been kind of a main guitar for me for ever, um, and I I love it. Um, so the normal Portlanders have a have a tummy cut. And well, yeah, you can you can get them with like the tummy cut and the arm cut, kind of like a like a Strat or something. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of like an either or, you know, pick your poison kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and like I said, growing up playing tellies, this kind of just feels more natural to me. Um, but it's killer. It, it has Bearcats in it as well, which sound just stupid good in this guitar particular like they're really great in the 503 um but they're just kind of extra punchy in this guitar maybe because it's a solid body so yeah yeah it's cool and it's now is this uh, set neck as well no nope, oh, it's bolt. a it's a bolt on okay. it's a bolt on i'm proud of that wear that's all the wear on this guitar is me and i'm i'm my sweat is wearing through the the nickel plating on the thing and that that makes me happy well done Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I'm noticing a trend with the Bigsby. I think that you're a Bigsby fan. Um, I do. I do love it. I blatantly overuse it, as do <laughs> a lot of people. Um, no shame though. Every um, worship guitar player does. I mean, this is just so fun, right? Yeah. It's the best. Yeah. Um, Casey just kind of puts them on there. That's kind of just like how they come. I mean, you can get them without them. Custom guitars, right? But. Yeah. Yeah. It's. I don't need a big speed, but I, I definitely, I like it. And if anything, it just looks cool, you know? Yeah. With a big piece of hardware on it. Um, so yeah, cool. and they stay in tune. They play really good. The, the necks don't really move around with all the flying. Like these are, these are probably the most solid guitars I've ever played or found. Like I That's awesome. rarely have to set them up or anything. So yeah. That's cool. They're great. Awesome. Last one. Number one, not number one because I play it the most. Um, number one is in the first Veritas I ever got. Um, this is the gold top. Sadly, he doesn't make these anymore, um, like quite like this. He does a single cut. Um, I think it's called the Orpheus Junior or something. Okay. But it's kind of more of like a, a little more junior. Yeah, a little more junior esque. Um, this one's closer to um, Gibson specs, which. When he built this guitar, he was a, his company was much smaller, yeah. so he could kind of get away with it. Um, if he did it now, he'd get very mean letters from Gibson saying, yeah. stop building our guitars. But um, I love this thing, man. It weighs 10,000 pounds, um, as you learned earlier. Literally um, 10,000 pounds. But it just uh, it just sounds so good. It, it feels really good. Like it, You can play it all the way up the neck, and it never frets out or like loses tone. And this was handmade. Yeah, so um, this was before all the CNCs and stuff that he uses now, which are, are killer. I mean, the, the quality is exactly the same. CNC Much more consistent. just yeah, CNC just makes it a lot more consistent. It's still all hand finished and really high quality. But yep, this one he he carved the top and um, it's got the kind of like the set neck. Like Gibsons have oh, that yeah. heel yeah. that kind of like leaves your thong hung up all the way up here, yeah. so you're kind of like stretching like. I mean, I don't play up here super often, yeah. 
Just You've even got. Music, there's a little bit of a carve here. Yeah, too. just a, just a little bit. I don't know if the camera like will see it, but yeah, just enough to make it comfortable see. playing up there. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's super comfy. Um, it feels just amazing. I know Gibson makes. I think it's called the Access. This pole with like the cutout like this, but this one feels great. And then the other nice thing. Um, everybody knows like Gibson's just snap headstocks because the the scarf joint on them is like right here, so yeah. it falls back gone yeah um casey does this cool thing where he actually moves the you'll never see it on camera but the scarf joint is actually further up on the okay. headstock and then the front and the back um isn't paint actually it's ebony wood oh, so yeah. he's kind of like sandwiched the scarf joint with two pieces of wood so the headstock's really sturdy, really um, really sturdy. it actually fell a couple years ago just straight back onto the headstock and not a crack, not a tuning issue, like wow. just nothing wrong. Sturdy. Awesome. So, yeah. Um, and what kind of pickups do you have in here? Uh, these are Lawlers. So okay. a Firebird pickup, which was, um, which is newer. I put it in a few months ago. Um, the P90 just had too much like quack for, yeah. you know. A little know, honky. Yeah, a little honky, like good. Like if I, you know, played you know, rock and roll or like for Lenny Kravitz or something. Like, <laughs> it'd be super awesome. And I'd be like, that's perfect. But yeah, um, yeah the humbucker thing was just a little little more appropriate or a little more the sound I was looking for um, yeah. for the Bethel music stuff. And then the P90 in the neck is just like the most buttery, dark, awesome nice. neck tone ever. So yeah, I super love this thing. Um, it's really special to me because it's the first one and it is it is completely made by hand by awesome. Casey Marvin himself. So, yeah, those are guitars. Well done, Casey. Good job, Casey. I'll call you tomorrow. Hey, wait. I think you need to. You need to. Where are these sunglasses back here? Just Ray Bans. I, I don't have a Ray Ban endorsement, so so I can't talk about them. Oh. I don't. I don't Do you talk rock about those on stage though? Uh, only on days where I'm like a little more arrogant than normal. But tell us a little bit about what you're running. Cool. Um, well, we run we run in stereo. Um, it's just kind of how we prefer things, especially with in-ears and stuff. Um, sounds a little nicer, so. Yeah. Um, two amps, always on. No AV in or anything weird. Um, this is an early 90s AC30. Um, just going into the Brilliant Channel, kind of set like edge of breakup. Um, I like that because it feels like I get more dynamic out of my hands as opposed to a pedal or a piece yeah. of gear. Um, so yeah, those amps are really great. They're kind of like the chimey, mid-rangey, like guitar fist kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and then the ProSonic, um, they're really, really cool amps that a bunch of Fender junkies tend to hate on sometimes because they're, um, they're Bruce Zinke amps and were kind of designed to compete with like Mesa Boogie and that kind of thing. A little higher gain. Yeah, okay. you get the, so there's like two gain channels or, you know, circuits in there. And you can switch it between like Class A or Class AB. And kind of like some of those like Mesa Boogie features were kind of incorporated into this amp, but we don't use any of that. I just run it Class A into the normal channel. Um, and I run a pretty clean again, like this amp, just edge of breakup. Um, and it just kind of covers the sonic territory that that amp doesn't quite fill out. So if that one's kind of like the mid-range in the face, like the ProSonic's kind of the frequency range around that, just to fill okay. things out, make it a little bigger. Um, and you've got 10s in that? Yep, yep. so that's 210, 212. Um, I think those are Celestians, just stock, and then uh, Greenbacks in that one. Yeah. Cool. And then tell me a little bit about your uh, B guitar. Cool. Um, so just another 90s AC30, tried and true. They sound great and we love them. Um, that one has different speakers. I think they're silvers, which are kind of like blues. Yeah. Just a different color, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that, that amp's great. And then kind of the same idea, like mid-range amp, and then one that fills out a little more. Um, space that the AC30 doesn't. Um, it's just one of these newer Repro um, Supra amps. And these things sound really cool. I 
checked them out maybe a year and a half, two years ago or something. Yeah. And right about the time they first came out. Yeah, yeah, I had a couple of guys I'm like, ah, oh, they're not as cool as the old ones. And I was like, oh, okay, well, never mind then. And um, just ended up playing with a shaman. I was like, don't trust that guy anymore. That sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and they're built like a tank, too. They're pretty yeah. great. I've blown up two now, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. We've, we've blown up two. Um, but they sound really, really great. And Supra was awesome and sent this one out when the other one went awesome. down on us. So, um, yeah, super great. And it's kind of just like boxy and very focused sounding. But, yeah. Again, fills out the range that the other stuff. Yeah, just on, yeah. I mean, it's, you can do two amps that are doing the same thing, and that's really cool, and it works too. Like, you really just want two amps that sound good. For, yeah, you know, stereo thing. But um, it's nice to kind of have the option, particularly at front of house. Like, you get in a different room. You know, we're playing a theater tonight, so maybe Clint would prefer one amp, or as opposed to if we get in a really washy room, you know, maybe he wants the more like focused sounding amp. Yeah. So it's nice to it's nice to have the the option. Um, and then we can kind of just pick and choose whatever we like in our ears. Awesome. So, yeah, nothing crazy. Um, now I'm sure we'll talk about it when we go over your pedals, but mm -hmm. uh, are you running like your delays and your reverbs? Are they like doing any back and forth through the um, amps that you're... Are not, they pretty much running the same into both? Not really. I, I'm really simple with delays. The stereo thing is just more for like the sonic size of things. Like um, we were playing church music, so like big guitars is kind of just genre appropriate. Um, yeah. So it just kind of like begs for the stereo thing. So it's it's less of a doing a back and forth thing. I, don't, I can't think of any Bethel music songs that I would have done like a big pong or yeah. anything like that. It's more just for the size and, and probably more for reverb than anything. Okay. Um, it just gets really really big, but you. Like the second you start putting a lot of reverb on a mono amp, it can get really cloudy, which is cool, but not quite for what we're doing. We want lots of reverb, still have it, you know, sound nice and clear, and you can tell what notes we're playing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Cool. Now, are you running like reverb and delay heavier into one or the other, or are you just nope, equally it's just into stereo out of the pedals, cool. you know, left and right? Awesome. Um, the only thing in between are those SGIs, and that's just so we can keep the amps off stage. And yeah. Our singers use Neumanns, which are really good sounding, expensive mics that also pick up everything else on the stage. Okay. So the lower the stage volume we have, the better. Um, and especially that's, I mean, that's just kind of how live you know, shows are yeah, going yeah. these days. So, yeah, we use the SGIs, which are, which are great. I've never heard them sound bad or anything like that. Um, yeah, we stick our amps in the back room like this with a bunch of ladders and cases and trucks and yeah. Let the loudness be out here and yeah. you know, not on stage. Now do you run any issues with the mics picking up uh, like the echoes and everything in, in different um, rooms? You know, we're in our it's pretty... not too bad. Like there's nothing like this truss isn't gonna like reflect a ton of stuff. Um, you can hear it a little bit, like sometimes in a, like a small club or something, we might have to line them up against the back wall, um, and then you definitely hear like the slap off of the wall. So we'll try to take some of the um, like case lids or covers and stuff, and like sure. do something to absorb it, because yeah, reflection does does happen even with it being close mic um, or close mic. Um, they're all open back, so you know you're just going to run into that sometimes. But in here, we're we're fine. And what's with these silver, they look like 57s, but you were mentioning that they're something Yeah, um, they're really similar to a 57, um, but it's a Shure 545 SD. I think they're like 10 bucks cheaper than a 57. Really? Believe it or not, yeah, wow. they look cooler, right? Um, we like the top end response better. It's a little more like open and airy on the top okay. end as opposed to like the... Every time I go back to a 57 for whatever reason, just maybe we don't have one of these around. Um, yeah. They just sound a little too like sharp and like zingy. Yeah. Um, which I mean, it's a '57. It's you know the classic close mic guitar amp microphone. But um, these just sound really, really great. They kind of do the same thing, just a little more, you know, towards our taste. So, awesome. Yeah, they're they're great. I love them a lot. Cool man. All right. Well, let's head out and take a look at your uh, your pedals. All right. So we got amps. 
yeah. and guitars. Yep. Can't do worship music without pedals. So tell me a little bit about your pedal board. Well, um, this is a smaller version that I've been using for the past um, almost a full year now, I'd say. Um, I, I, do, I love pedals in the studio. I hate tap dancing live, so I bought a really nice, expensive MIDI switcher and pulled my board apart and was like, I'm gonna build this main board and built this as a fly rig and I just haven't put the main board together. So I've been using this um, fly rig, which is the main rig <laughs> currently. <laughs> Um, by default. So just kind of made this to cover the bare essentials of what I need for um, Bethel music stuff and um, you know session things as well. Some things might change a little bit depending on sessions but for the most part it stays exactly the same. So um, well just because it kind of has to and I mean it sounds great there as well. Um, the whammies first um, in line. I'm not really using that for any songs on tour, it's just kind of a toy. We're just thinking, like not doing Glory to Glory? We're not doing Glory to Glory, unfortunately. Right. Um, sorry, man. Shut the camera down. Yeah. We're, we're so gone. Alright. I see <laughs> no, how it is. I'm kidding, no kidding. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. It does a bunch of different things, um, basically. Right now, it adds a fifth, and then a sixth, is all okay. I kind of have it set for. Yes. Trevor Raven stuff, you know. But yeah, it's just a fun toy. I used it last night for the first time on the tour just for like a little spontaneous moment thing. Cool. Because I was feeling it. So, Lamy, super fun. Love those things. Um, underneath the board, which you can't see, um, is an RJM tone saver, which is just a buffered splitter. Um, and that just keeps things juiced going through the board. And also, um, I like to have my tuner always on, whether my volume pedal's down or up. And because this is just your regular um, non-modded, non-cool color um, volume pedal, it does the tone sub thing. Yeah. So I run the tuner out of the tuner out of the buffer so I can tune my guitar. And that's just a little mini sonic research tuner accurate and um, it's cool too because like sometimes um, I mean guitars just change tuning when you're playing you know they'll go yeah. flat especially me because I play really hard um, or sometimes like maybe the in your mix is a little washed out like it's nice to have a visual reference for tuning so if like you play a note and it's like a little like flat you can kind of bend it up to pitch or you know yeah nice visual aid and you prefer um, these over like poly tunes just yeah. A more accurate, or I mean, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really used the Polytunes a bunch. I know okay. I've seen some other guys use them, um, and they were kind of like hard to see in daylight and that yeah. kind of thing. So I don't know. This is just easier, and because it is a strobe tuner, like I can trust it. Like if I need to intonate a guitar or something like that, like you know. And it's small and cute and fits on the fly rig quite easily. Yeah. So and your splitter underneath your. You're not running any like weird series or parallel like no 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 it just loops or literally just a split that only goes to the tuner okay and then the output of that goes to the walrus compressor um, which is like the best guitar pedal compressor okay. ever um, it's the only thing that's always on so that's clean without it and with it so just like a little bit of sweetness yeah you probably can't even because the amps are like a thousand miles away, but just a little bit of sweetness. It's not hitting the amps much harder or anything. Um, and one thing I've noticed I do is I'll adjust the blend knob between like this guitar and the Strat. Um, I'll compress the Strat a little bit more um, just because I don't have a, like I'm not using a gain stage or something to get more output of it from it. So it just sounds a little better doing that. Um, so yeah, so that stays on all the time not doing much. Um, after that is the POG2, um, and I'll get ahead of everybody saying, well, why didn't you just use the smaller one? And it's because that one sounds better and sounds <laughs> different. Call me a nut job. 
Um, but the smaller they get, the worse they sound to me. Um, Agreed. With the with the pog stuff, so I have the big one, and it's nice because you get the presets like. That's um, I'd use that on forever. Um, the next one is a lot more sub octave, which would be um, the shepherd in the uh, verse two part, and then just a bunch of empty patches and randomness. But I probably mostly live on that forever patch. Um, if I'm using it for any other songs, this is kind of like your generic. Tone. Yeah. Um, the other cool thing about the Pog 2s is um, they have the, the low pass filter on it. So you can cut off some of that like really shrill top yeah. end. Like, so, like I've, I tried the micro, um, the one smaller than this on this board initially, just because I had it sitting around. I was like, oh, I'll just save a little bit of space. And yeah. it was just too painful and shrill. Like I, it, it bothered me. And, and the front nano's of house even guys. more. Yeah, the nano's yeah. even, you know. Some people don't notice it, and that's cool. Uh, for me, for some reason, it just sticks out, so I stick with that. Yeah. <laughs> Call me crazy, but um, from the Pog, I think it just goes over to the Kilt, um, which is an awesome sounding pedal. Great job, JHS, and great job, Stu. Um, like Stu, I used old X Pandora pedals for ever. Um, I just love the way they sound. Um, yeah. And when this came out, I tried it and A beat it and couldn't tell the difference. So um, it's kind of more like a mid rangey tone. Like, I don't really necessarily do things in stages. Um, I have like clean tone, right? And then that's like a very mid rangey, overdriven tone. Um, and it's got a boost in it, which I do use. For more, right? Yeah. Um, more is always better. More is always better and more fun. More is more, as they say. Yeah. Um, and then after that is the Ruby Red, which is, again, I, I'm a massive Butch Walker fan, but I guess he liked the Super Bowl pedals, as do I. Um, so when this came out and I learned that it was a Super Bowl with a boost in it, I was like, well, the Super Bowl is kind of the other overdrive that I use. Um, with the X Bandora or the Kilt for a while. So I was like, I'll just get this. Mm -hmm. And then I've kind of got like two different sounding um, overdrive tones. So again, clean, more mid rangey. That's just like a little bit more and kind of closer to what the amp is doing. It's a little more open. And then um, the boost on this side hits um, the pedal harder. Um, yep, so I've only got one delay, um, and I just turn it up more to compensate for the lack of the other nine that I don't have. Um, yeah, it, it just it just delays things. Um, I'll, that's all it does. I do love the timeline. Um, for a couple different reasons though. One, I think it sounds incredible. Um, it just does, especially like the stereo field of it is like, every time I see someone running them in mono, it makes me just a little bit sad because every time I've gone from mono to stereo on them, I'm just like blown away by how yeah. good it sounds. So yeah, run it in stereo. It's not going back and forth or doing anything. Like literally I think every setting I have on it, yeah, is just the tape setting because that's really all I need. Um, now you're running different delay settings for each song and then... Yep. So, um, the way I have the Strymon stuff set up, I have this disaster area, this old controller, um, and I had to get them to custom modify it because I, I, I don't want to like hold a switch to get to another device. Or, like, it's yeah. just too confusing for me. And in the middle of a live set, like I just don't have time to wait on gear to switch over like do yeah. stuff like I just need to go and have it be there um, so you can call them and have them do this little software modification or whatever it is they do but it just banks up and down on both devices and then selects A or B on both devices um, so every song has a has its own like delay 
you know, mix and repeats are a little bit different and the BPMs are in there, so it's always matched up with tracks and the Ableton rig and click and all that good stuff. Um, and then all the songs, I mean, the reverb is kind of where things get different and like kind of not necessarily out there, but I change that a lot because the Big Sky just has so many different things that are really, really cool and yeah. um, fit differently in, in different songs for different uses. So um, yeah, this is just kind of an easy way to navigate those pedals for me. And then um, some songs will have like a C preset. That's a bigger sound for um, the chorus of um, the Helser song, Thank You. Um, so this would be like... breaks in the song and then for the chorus little picking thing um, it's more of a shimmer thing because all the little cool octave up things sound fun there um, so what do you want to do fun times um, so yeah that's that's all that is um, and real quick you can get all of these presets on yes michaelsite.com slash store stpope.com slash door. Yep, you can download all these things onto your own pedals with a little um, MIDI interface and Nixie. And yeah, it's been it's been awesome. A bunch of people have been digging it, so it's cool. been been fun. Um, so that's delayed reverb. Um, from reverb, it just goes out to amps, and then the only other things I have on this board is um, this little Walrus Julia, which is a really fun. Um, it does chorus and modulation, and I kind of just have it, or it does, sorry, chorus and vibrato. Um, and I just have it set up to like do a little vibrato thing. Just like a little vibe, if I so choose. It does a great chorus as well. I have this other um, stereo chorus pedal that I really like, which is a Vertex. Um, and that pedal is unbelievable. Yeah. Just I'll, like if we do a tour with um, Callie and she does her song Spirit Move, I would kind of swap that out for the Vertex. But um, right now I'm just I super love the Julia pedal. <laughs> All the Walrus stuff is really great, but that one's particularly yeah. nice. So yeah, that'd be like chorus and you know, all the way over to vibrato. Yeah. Right. So sounds awesome. Nothing, nothing crazy in pedal world yet. Hopefully it'll get more complicated and. Also, more simple. So yeah. It'd be nice to have everything on a switcher, but yeah, this is just kind of the bare minimum for how we do. Cool. Well, thanks so much to Michael for coming out. Yeah, thanks for hanging out, man. It's yeah, absolutely. Fun. It's been fun. Um, make sure to check out our YouTube channel for more videos, more rig rundowns. And that's all today, folks. Cool.